Hello viewers, welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair Channel and today I have a 2019 Honda Civic with a 2 liter engine and the customer has requested to me that they wanted to upgrade and change the uh, meep meep horn. Uh, I call it the meep meep horn because uh, that's exactly on, on what it does. Uh, now this customer uh, uh, in particular has complained about this horn because uh, nobody is able to hear it when he's on the highway or when somebody is changing lanes and the customer is utilizing that lane uh, the customer is not able to hear it and uh, apparently and unfortunately that that driving has uh, gotten worse uh, in my area so there's not too many people out there that, that follow the rules anymore. And so uh, he wants a louder horn that's going to wake people up and, uh, and bring them up to their attention. Apparently, uh, this is actually a, a safety issue and some people <laughs> may not be aware of it. Uh, I'm not sure as to why Honda and other manufacturers, they just decided to use that cheapo disc type horn uh, that does the the meep meep sound and it, it, it's not loud enough so uh, it's not very good on the highway because it's very loud and so it's it's uh, it becomes a safety issue anyhow uh, i got a couple aftermarket uh, theam freeway blaster horns one high note and one low note so I'm using these. This one I just I took it out of the package. It's the same thing as this, except that the note uh, is different. So we are going to be installing the the dual horns on this uh, uh, Civic. So now uh, it seems like that the horn is in a location in which you may need to take the entire bumper off to gain access. I can see the horn if you look through over here i can see the disc horn right here hiding i don't know if i'll be able to get access from underneath uh, worst case is i have to take the whole bumper off in order to get access so we have to see if i can get access from underneath or if the bumper has to come off so i just removed a bunch of clips that's all over on the front end of the bumper here and then now you have this uh, five millimeter hex uh, Allen key on each end that you need to take out. And then the other side here. Just make sure you remove everything until the, the bumper is free, like this. So it's very hard to show everything on camera. So when I'm underneath the vehicle, there's a bunch of these clips here. So I'm just using like a trim tool. I pop this off and then it comes out. Uh, a few of them will probably break because they're, they're brittle. You may need to replace the f a few. There's one end here at the end of the bumper. It's a, a 10 mil, so you need to remove that on each side. One here and one on the driver's side. This side is the passenger side. So there's two screws here. It needs to be uh, taken out. Two on this side and two on the other side. So now I believe we would be able to push this out but, uh, carefully. There are some a couple tabs in here I need to, to push out. Sometimes you may need to insert a plastic uh, a trim tool to get in there without scratching or or chipping or damaging the paint and sometimes you can lift up and pull out uh, <laughs> gently and 
you could try to pull out and get inside here without damaging the paint and and lift up on the uh the tabs you need to lift up on the tabs to uh <laughs> to get the the bumper out just carefully uh, not where you damage the paint got to get inside there you can see that you just lift up on the tab when it's inside and, and you push up. And the whole bumper should just uh, come out. So now hopefully I can get this off. I'm just going to place uh, some sort of, of padded uh, material so that I don't damage or scratch the bumper typically it's best to get uh, two people to pull the bumper off so you don't damage anything this one you just need to, to lift up Over here, there are some tabs. You may need to uh, to use a thin screwdriver to lift up on the tab. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. So now we have to remove all of these clips now because it seems like the bumper is all, this piece is all, is part of the bumper. So we need to, to get the, the, the plastic off here, everything. So we're just going to remove all of these clips on top and just go from there. I'm not in favor of these vehicles because of all these, the million clips here. So you got to remove a whole bunch of stuff to j just to remove the, the, the bumper. Not the exactly a fun job so now we can remove this plastic out of here we just uh, set that aside and then you have some uh, clips here that's running across here for the liner that needs to come off so this uh the rubber liner it needs to come off here So now uh, we're going to have to lift up on the bumper here to, uh, to get this uh, free.
this bumper comes out but this plastic is still intact so somehow we need to, to un, uh, un uh, uh, clip it here This just unclips off of the headlight uh, assembly. And the same goes for the other side here. And then you'll be able to get the, uh, the bumper off. Make sure it's free. You gotta be careful. It's best to do this with two people. Otherwise you are going to scratch the bumper. So, so, so the bumper is out now. Uh, that's why I put the carpet underneath because I'm, I'm working a, a solo here. So, uh, so we are just going to move the bumper and, uh, and start working. So you want to place the bumper on a soft surface here. So this top part, you got to be careful. It clips onto the headlights. So just, you need to watch out for that. So now the horn is located right here, the meep meep horn. So uh, we are going to uh, change it out. So we are going to disconnect the uh, connector here. Need to push on the tab here and then it, uh, it comes uh, right out. I'm trying to see if I'm going to ut utilize the factory uh, connector or if I'm going to uh, to make some custom wiring here. So we are going to remove the horn. It's a 12 mil. You gotta be careful here because it's uh, attached to uh, another bracket here. And loosen it up. This is your your inky dinky uh, disc disc style uh, horn. So we are just going to tighten this up. I see that this piece is plastic here, so it's not a good idea to connect the ground here because this whole bracket is, is plastic. Only this piece uh, is metal. So I'm just going to see if I should use the, the factory wiring or, or snip this off and use the wires from there over here uh, there's a a ground cable that came with this horn so i'm connecting it to the bracket here we need to tighten up the nut this is a 10 mil and then we need to connect the positive uh, to the end here it doesn't matter which one you use uh, you can use uh, either side for a ground or a positive we're going to spray some of the fluid film stuff and we're going to install the first horn here and we'll have to find a location for the, the second one. I, uh, I actually forgot to do a before and after for the sound of the horn. It's too late now. We're going to tighten this up. And we're just going to unclip the plastic here for now. And I can work with the the wiring here very small gauge wiring looks like it's a 18 gauge or something so 
So I just found out that this particular Honda utilizes its own power and ground from here. So I don't think it uses a, a, a separate ground. So we are going to snip this off and use the wires from here to connect to the new horn. And then we are going to, to put a second horn after we are done the first one. So we are going to, to cut this off now. You need to remove the the tape out of the way here. very small uh, piece of wiring uh, if you want uh, you could use separate wiring with a separate relay which is a bit more work or you can use the existing wiring for that horn because it's too small of a wiring it might not be able to produce enough voltage so that's one one issue it could cause a, a bottleneck in the system we are going to take this clip out, but uh, I'm going to uh, to see what happens at the very end and see if, if I'm uh, happy with it or not. So anyhow, uh, we are going to uh, to cut the sheath of the wire off now. This is a, an 18 gauge, as, as what it seems from here, 18. <clears throat> I have uh, 14 gauge rolls wires, so I'm just going to use that to extend the wire over. Just trying to see on, uh, on how much I need here. Now we'll need to, to solder this afterwards. Need to cut the uh, the wire loom up a little bit to get inside here.
Try to twist this in so that I can uh, solder it afterwards. So we can have a solid uh, connection. Make sure the connection is firm here and we can, uh, can solder. I'm using a, a butane based solder uh, by a power probe. Just wait for this to warm up a tiny bit. My hands are a little bit shaky at the moment. I know it's not the best soldering job, but getting hard to get this thing onto the wire. It's not getting hard enough exactly. I was, I was out of butane. I refilled it up. There was no butane in here. So we are going to try again now to finish this up. Need to wait for this uh, to warm up. I might need to put a new piece of shrink wrap. I'll just be able to do this on the other end of the wire before I uh, close it up.
just want to make sure you don't burn the wire here so you just got to be careful and I'm just doing the other side here You won't need to put too much uh, solder, just enough to hold the wire in place. And you can, can pull on the wire to make sure if you did a good job or not. So we are going to, to heat shrink this now. I'm just going to use a heat gun for the uh, heat shrink. That's good. So now we're just going to remove some of the sheath here for, uh, for this. It's a 14 gauge. Just get it onto the tip here. And then uh, we're just going to crimp it. You could do however way you want to with this uh, installation. Uh, everybody has their own <laughs> preference of doing e e electrical work on vehicles. So however way you want to do it, as long as the <laughs> uh, integrity of the wiring stays intact and there's no issues. So now we are just going to repeat the process for the black uh, wiring, the same thing as the white one. I'm using uh, this end here, the uninsulated piece here. That's where I use the crimp here. Now both are done now. Now I'm going to uh, connect them uh, to the horn. So we are going to see if this works now. I'm not sure if this works or not. So, so we're going to see. So it's 
so that was a, uh, a success for the first horn. So as I said, uh, this utilizes its own ground and positive connection. You don't need to ground it to the vehicle. Like how it supplied with the, uh, the cable here, you don't need to use this. Now I was gonna say uh, you can use this connection if you want to, to get a ground or you can get the ground directly from the wiring from the vehicles uh, wiring directly it doesn't really matter so what I'm planning to do here with the second horn I'm going to utilize a ground from the horn itself from here and then I'm going to attach it here and then I'm somehow I'm going to splice through the positive and attach the positive here and then that's it Just trying to do the adjustments here. See on, uh, on what I can do. Just going to do a test here and grab the positive from this one and put it onto this one. See if this one works. Just uh, still in the experimenting stages here, but. You need to, to figure things out and, and improvise uh, sometimes. I'm going to tighten this up. I'm just going to see if that works now just to make sure that this is working and all I can do is uh, splice the wire and sp splice it in Going to extend the wire there uh, to open it up. And put some. Uh, shrink wrap we need to put a, a larger one
So now the wirings are done. I uh, joined them together. So I still need to do the uh, the other side now, the black one. So now all of the wiring is complete. We are going to make the connections now. And also before we press that horn, uh, we have to change the fuse, I believe to a 20 amp fuse. Each horn is approximately 10 amps. So we have two horns, so 10 and 10 is 20. Because if you leave the 10 amp horn uh, fuse, it's, it's going to blow the fuse because it's utilizing too much uh, current so I'm going to be changing the fuse here uh, it's number 24 here it says horn so this is uh, the 10 amp 10 amp fuse here so we are going to take that out and change it to a, a 20 amp there are some spare fuses here that already came in the fuse block plastic piece so we are going to install a a 20 amp fuse so now we have the 20 amp fuse in place here for the two horns so once you're done installing the uh, 20 amp fuse you can just put everything back and you should be uh, all good to go here so this goes like this So this is the the final uh, setup here. These two horns over here. And just make sure everything is uh, tightened up and everything works <laughs> before you put the a bumper back on. Okay, go ahead. Hold it down for like a couple seconds. So we're going to and put the bumper back on. I'll go on the passenger side, you go on the driver's side. You wanna hold the one end. Actually, I'll hold both. You just go up here to, uh, to put the bumper back on. Okay, and just, uh, <laughs> just line it up. A, a very thin screwdriver to get the, the bumper on the side here <laughs> clipped in but that's in now everything is just the opposite of uh, <laughs> removal so I'm just going to put everything back in and, and clip everything in now
So here's the uh, the meat meat porn. Uh, so, so no more of this uh, garbage uh, junk. So now the the new horns they sound very loud now, and the the customer is uh, is all good to go. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a like. And please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and take care.